Hi young friends, good evening, hope you are all safe today, are you ready for a ride with me? We will rewind, we will go back to 1963. The year 1963 is a very unique and significant year. It is in 1963 that the great train robbery happened in Buckinghamshire in England. It was also the year when the first woman reached the space, Valentina Tereshkova. It was also the year when Martin Luther King made the unforgettable speech, I have a dream. And it was also a year, to be very specific, November 21st, when a tiny rocket, a Nike Apache rocket, burst into the sky of a city, Trivandrum, in the state of Kerala, in the southernmost part of India. This event occurred in the evening and the filled the skies of Trivandrum with a bright color of sodium vapor. In the course of my childhood, there were events that has etched into my memory. One such image or is always that in Trivandrum where I lived and studied. Every Wednesday in the evening, we used to hear the sonic boom of a sounding rocket being launched. And you know, at that time, my parents used to tell me uh, the, the Tumba rocket is being launched. So I was wondering what is this. Then later in 71, in 1971, I have a distinct image in the newspaper, Kerala Gomri, the image of Dr. Vikram Sarabhai lying in the, uh, within the mosquito tent in a hotel in Trivandrum. That, that image is still etched in my mind. Of course, at that time, I didn't know who was Dr. Vikram Sarabhai. But people around me told that a great scientist is no more. Again, after a few years later, there, is a, there was another image in the newspapers. A young person with a flowing hair in his head, uh, pointing his hand to the sky. And that was none other than Dr. Abdul Kalam, immediately after the success of SLV-3. So this image also was etched in my mind, but at that time, I could understand that something great has happened. Why I told you all these images? These are all brief events which shows the various stages of evolution of Isro. Dr. Vikram Sarabhai, whom we revere as the father of Indian space program, at a very early stage in 1950s itself, envisioned what should be the way forward with respect to the Indian space program. He proudly claimed that our program should be such that we are second to none in the community of nations in utilizing the applications of space for the benefit of our society. And my dear young friends, I am very proud to say that ISRO is exactly doing that in the course of last 50 to 60 years. The first decade under Dr. Mikram Sarabhai was, I think, the evolutionary stage, wherein the baby steps of rocketry and satellite making was thought of. So I think I was told by the seniors that that was a very exciting period because you started doing something and basically without knowing anything. That hard work during that first decade paid way for the India's first satellite vehicle launch vehicle, satellite launch vehicle SLV-3. So I would say that the mid-70s to mid-80s were the period when we mastered the technology of launch vehicles as well as the technology for spacecrafts. The potential of using data from space is enormous. So we have satellites specialized for Earth observation requirements. We have satellites for communication. You know, without 
the communication uh, revolution that has happened uh, now in, at present you will not be able to lead your life the mobile phones have become part of your life it is part of your body so that is a scenario i am sure all of you will be having your mobiles in your pocket even now so remote sensing communication later we entered into the arena of navigation so we have our own constellation of satellites for navigation navic as we call it so that now you can like gps you use it in your mobiles and move around to unknown destinations so this is this is another explosive technology that has come into regular use and we also learned to build launch vehicles the beginning was very humble we started with slv3 abdul kalam was the first project director of slv3 which initially had the capability to send around 40 kg of payload or 40 kg of satellite into an orbit of around 400 km from slv3 we moved on to aslv augment, augmented satellite launch vehicle which had the capability of sending a satellite of mass 150 kg so from 40 kg we went to 150 kg but from aslv i i really would like to compliment our visionaries our leaders we took a quantum jump into PSLV the polar satellite launch vehicle now coming to the polar satellite launch vehicle you know this has become the work horse of isro initially since PSLV was not ready we had a collaboration with the russia and with the russian we we started launching our our own satellites starting with aryabhata as you may be know you may be knowing from russian launch vehicles but subsequently with the emerge emerging of pslv all the remote sensing satellites we started launching from our own soil now coming to communication satellites again the same story we started building our own communication satellites and depended on ariane for sending our own satellites now gslv launch vehicle is a unique uh, launch vehicle in the sense for sending a communication satellite the physics of that says that the satellite should be put in an orbit of 36500 kilometers so in order to place such a satellite in such an orbit we need a cryogenic te technology so initially we didn't have the technology so again our capability to have collaborations with the foreign people or foreign countries helped us so we used the russian cryogenic stage and started sending our own gslv satellite uh, launch vehicles later we started building our navigation satellites which was again put in gslv launch vehicle but gslv launch vehicle with we what we called mark 2 has got the capability of only around maximum 2 tons but all over the world the requirement of communication the requirement of transponders was growing up and so hence we needed more heavy launch uh, satellites to be launched so we need at least a capability of 4 ton plus so we envisaged in the design of a new rocket called gslv mark 3 which is capable of sending around 4.4 to 4.5 tons spacecraft into the orbit so gslv mark 3 is also there so as i said basically we have a series of launch vehicles now when we talk about the 70s as i said earlier it was dr vikram sarabhai who pioneered the evolution of isro then but i would say the real contribution with respect to structuring indian space research organization as well as the department of space i think the credit should go to the leader professor sarish dhawan it was taken further up by professor ur rao and it was during his time that really the 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 technology of satellites exploded and we started making our own huge remote sensing satellites communication satellites then came professor kasturi rangan and he again transformed the course of isro's further progress by having more technological input into the uh the the content into the satellites he was also the person who gave the seed for our planetary exploration also and uh, when dr madhavan nair came in as uh, next chairman he took us to the moon i am only narrating some of the events so that you will understand how we are growing and the next chairman dr radhakrishnan took us to mars so that story is very famous all both the stories are extremely famous one of the significant achievements that i would say that isro should be very proud of and you should be very proud of is the launch of gslv d5 in 2014 it is the first time successfully we launched a 100% indigenous 
GSLV uh, launch vehicle with the 100% indigenous cryogenic stage. So, acquiring the cryogenic technology was extremely important and in the community of the nations, space faring nations, if you do not have the cryogenic technology, then people do not consider us very seriously. So, that was a very, very significant uh, uh, event and uh, as a leader, the credit should go to Dr. K. Shivan, the present chairman of ISRO, who was a permission director for that mission. There was the next under former chairman Kiran Kumar. We could, we were able to send 104 satellites in one shot, in one mission, which was, uh, uh, which is still a record that is to be broken. Another event which definitely has excited you, I know, is the effort that ISRO is going to take, is taking now with respect to our Gaganyan program. So, it has not only ignited you, excited you, I, I feel it has ignited and excited the whole nation as together. We are going to have sending our own Indians in our own launch vehicle to uh, an orbit of around 400 kilometers safely and then bringing them back safely. It was announced by our Honorable Prime Minister two years back during Independence Day and ISRO is striving hard to achieve this uh, uh, momentous event. Now, let me t talk about us. In ISRO, dear friends, you know that as far as anything is concerned, we discuss. The discussion is absolutely transparent. There will be various levels of discussions, but the discussion will be absolutely transparent. Anybody can talk, anybody can raise questions, anybody can argue. Arguments are not at all discouraged. Now, the decision what is finally taken may not be acceptable or may not be the way a few persons or a few percentage of people who are participating in the discussion may like. But once a decision is made, then everybody abides by that and that is the next attribute what I call as discipline. The third point what I will say is absolutely the most essential factor which I would say is integrity. You should develop the culture of integrity. And always, young friends, you please note, space activity is not a single man's activity. It is always a collective, collective activity and hence integrity is paramount. The fourth attribute which I would say is helping us is the passion that every, every person in ISRO is having. It is not the money that is driving an ISRO, people, ISRO person to achieve or do what he wants or what he is doing. It is a passion not the least is the commitment that you give into your activities. 100% commitment and another thing which is not replaceable is hard work. Hard work only will bring you the laurels and the fruits of your efforts. No shortcut method for glory and achievement will sustain. This I want to reiterate my dear friends. So, these are all some of the attributes which collectively drives the so called ISRO culture and that is what makes ISRO so unique. Let me tell you one more uh, small event. In each one of your life, there will be significant turning points and it is for you to grab those turning points favorably to you so that it, you can go up the steps. And many, many, uh, each one of you have, will have your unique uh, aspects on this. I, I will, I will, I can only share my experience with you because I studied in a very, a government school. In fact, I have studied throughout my life in government schools only and government colleges only. And I studied in my vernacular language, Malayalam. So, this continued up to 8th standard and uh, my parents and my teachers, I was a very good student. My parents and teachers decided that this is a stage where you should switch over to English medium. And they put me in English medium. I had no mastery with respect to English language. I could not speak a single word in English. So, this was a big problem for me when I switched over to English medium. And in my school, there were uh, sessions, there was a club called English speaking club and people were encouraged to go there and talk. Once I went and gave a speech, the teacher, I think I, 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 I give a lot of respect to him. He, he is one person I definitely rate as uh, one who has molded me now. I gave a speech, two, three other students also gave a speech and the teacher told, he does not know anything. Actually, I was humiliated. But 
let me tell you that point i made up my uh, mind that i will i will be good in english i will be one of the best in english that kind of a resolve i took at that time and i i am it is not for boasting i am only telling uh, these kinds of events is what is going to mold you and make you uh, to a better person let me tell you when my plus 2 and pre degree we call it pre degree at that time i was one of the toppers in the state with respect to english language so that is that is exactly what i would like to tell you that determination is extremely important these are all the turning points in your life which is going to help you to become a better person emotion drives us as you would have seen during the chandrayaan uh, where we narrowly missed uh, the landing uh, in landing in the moon emotions come out we all cried that day so spontaneous emotions spontaneous overflow of powerful emotions that is what isro people have my dear young friends and you know to quote wordsworth great quotation spontaneous overflow of powerful emotions is nothing but poetry so that is why isro is unique and isro is creating poetry through its space activities thank you very much